if women are empowered, if gender equality is promoted, child mort maternal mortality will reduce. Child mortality will drop yeah. because the mothers are educated. They will go to the antenatal clinic when they're pregnant. Yeah. They can control the number of children they're going to put, they're going to have. They know what to do to keep their children healthy. Yeah. They will breastfeed their children. Yeah. They understand the processes of hand washing, basic things like ORS, taking care of their children. All these things, and this will reduce hunger. This will reduce poverty. Absolutely. So the um, education component is very key. Mm -hmm. Even the cultural issue that you're trying to hammer that it might be a bit difficult, it's still education. Yeah. If they go to school and they see the benefits, they will drive it for their children. Yeah. But there are also other factors beside that. And this issue um, stems on policies. You see, um, we need to have um, another an approach to the curriculum system of our yeah. education in Nigeria, okay. right from the colleges of education, and even in the universities where we train our graduate teachers. Yeah. We look at the, um, the, the, the pattern in which the workforce is going now in the world. Everything is becoming technology-based. Yeah, Last two weeks, I had to counsel a mother that was almost going freak because her daughter said she wanted to do study animation. And she was saying, animation, why not be a lawyer? Why not be a doctor? And I said, this, this is the... The, animation is good stuff. Yes, good. For, for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's where they're making the big bucks. And days. the parents, you know, yeah. they're still saying because they, they don't understand. They, yeah. No, so they and need that's education still, in that regard. Education. Yeah. yeah. So now going to issue of children choosing the right career choices, mm. it's also important if you want to empower women, because if, even if I go to school, I have all the education, I have anything, I'm still dumb. I'm not clear about my future. I'm not clear about my career, mm. my goals, my plans, my aspirations for myself. I could still come back and be a liability to the society despite my level of education so that is the issue of looking at the curriculum yeah. looking at how the teachers that will come into the classrooms to train this 21st century children yeah. that are moving far beyond their level yeah. they need to understand them for example guidance and counseling that is one curriculum that needs to be completely overhauled Absolutely. in such mm. a way that every teacher that has opportunity to come out of a teacher training college or a university should be able to put a child right on their career choices. But, but now, are we even doing that now? When I was in elementary school, no, nobody uh, told me what I should study. I mean, usually if you knew math, you knew math. Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, maybe some people assumed you might be a, whatever, an engineer or something. But there weren't people who were like directing kids to say, I think you ought to go towards medicine. You ought to, I mean, I, I don't know. Are they doing that now? From elementary, from the elementary school, are people giving them? Are there people? That they are, are doing kids that. They're, they're actually the doing they it, go? but it's not thorough. Yeah, they're doing it. It's not thorough, and it doesn't. And is it not too early? It's not too early to start from the elementary it school. It does. It's not too early because okay. look at the trend Shouldn't of children. Shouldn't they have like a broad base of knowledge so that as they get maybe to the university, they might have a better appreciation for what they may no, want to No, it's it's not choose. too early. It's yeah. not too early. When we look at the Bloom's taxonomy of learning, mm. the you know, the stratified um, means of learning, yeah. there's actually a curriculum on career choice that you can actually analyze with that. We have um, the level of remembering, we have understanding, we mm. have applying, and then we have the higher order thinking skills of um, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Yeah. Anything you want to do in a classroom is to get a child to the point of creating his own original. Yeah. You could start with types of um, food, and then you give the child Gary, you mentioned Semovita. Uh, 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 Dr. B. Personal now, you are a medical doctor by training, you are an educationist. You have found the proprietor's principal of a school. <laughs> when did you know that you were going to do that? Was it in elementary school that you knew this? Or <laughs> this, after you got a medical degree, then you knew that you would do that? If you asked me this question five years ago, yes. I would have told you that um, I stumbled on the career. Yeah. But when I reflect, I do actually have vivid pictures of memories when I was an eight, ten, nine, ten year old yeah. that I wanted to be like my teacher. Okay. I actually have a picture of a teacher that keeps flashing back my mind in the past two years mm. of how what we say when I grow up, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a teacher, and then but I ended up in medical school. Mm. And even in medical school, I used to do very well in tutorials okay. with my colleagues. But you know, and this is what we're talking about career choices. Yeah. I could have stayed in the four walls of um of a teaching hospital, carrying out research and all that, taking care of patients, but I'm I'm impacting more on my society where I am. Yes. 
as an entrepreneur, a social entrepreneur, and also someone that is able to contribute to the educational component yeah. um, of our society. So this is just the same thing about the career choices. There's actually nothing wrong. So uh, uh, you, you, you've been quoted uh, in, in, in the magazine that, um, that yeah, you think that maybe some of our kids are not learning quite as much or not getting as much as they probably could be getting. Now, for women, if you look at, I, when I look at the area of ICT today uh, in occupation, if I look at even the, the camera people here, well, fortunately mm -hmm. first, my producer is a female, <laughs> but, but other than that, you know, if you look at the camera crew, for the most part, they're mostly men. Uh, if you look at um, graphics designers, they're usually men. If you look at um, website designers, if you look at people in ICT programming, mostly men. What accounts for that? I mean, uh, women told <laughs> in elementary school, you cannot do programming. Before I answer you that, why yes. did you choose a female producer? Because I'm sure you had yeah. male producers. To in, you had options of choosing male producers. Well, because she, 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 she went through mass communication and she was as good as the other guys. And so she was the one. What you were talking about, um, it's all female, males, graphic designers, web designers, animation, yes. animist, and um, you know, animation um, developers and all that. You see, what we're talking about here is actually if these children can't make choices about what they don't know. Yeah. You want to see more females in those fields. If they don't know those fields exist, early enough for them to decide to get themselves um, to de build their interest and even sustain their interest and get parental support, yeah. get the support from the community, the society, they can't go there. And that's still back to the issue of the guardians and counselors. The guardians and counselors we have in our schools, how well equipped are they to expose children to the 21st century workforce demand. Mm. You know, in the next 15 years, there are some jobs that won't be there for people anymore. Absolutely. Some degrees in the university, people will get there and they will not get jobs to do when they come out. Yeah. So it's out, what I'm trying to say, it's, it's the foundation. Yeah. You made mention that maybe it was too early to get them to start learning such things at the elementary school. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you it's not too early yeah. because the children should be able to evaluate their decisions. Yeah. They need to be able to assess their decisions. If they don't get used to that from an early age, it's now when there's so much, you don't want me to assess and decide outside after so, out of so many options. But if they, are, if they have gotten used, and that's why I made reference to the Bloom's taxonomy of learning. Yeah. If children have been used to go through that ladder for everything they learn, everything they do, get to the point of analyzing, evaluating, and creating, yeah. then those children, when they get to the point of making the choices of their career, they will make the right choices. I was just, I was just saying that to me, it is not so much what happens to the individual female. Therefore, we should look at our curriculum, we should look at our schools and be sure that the females are also taking the classes, the courses that are going to uh, lead to the best jobs in the future, mm -hmm. especially in the ICT area. Mm -hmm. And I think you made a good point that the, uh, the teachers should therefore be prepared so that they can teach those courses and also can guide, you know, our kids towards that. So much but then you said that the that you want that concern. You said it was good, but that is important to be sure you got this thirty percent, forty percent representation of women in the state assemblies, national assemblies, or whatever. But isn't that indicative? If if younger girls see that the prime minister is a female, then they aspire to also be prime minister. If they see that the uh, that a female is the, is the Senate president, then they also aspire. So, so it's, it's good that we have this. this it's uh, good we have it, but we shouldn't just sit back. Numbers assigned for it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. It's good that we have those numbers there. Yeah. Just like you said, it's going to encourage them, it's going to inspire them. And those women will defend their consist constituencies more. Yeah. Because even a woman that is um, the, that is supporting the home, you know, everything changes about the home the, woman, the moment a woman begins to earn. Mm. It's not enough. That's what we're trying to say. Yeah. And we should not just keep looking at the political angle again. Not everybody can go into politics. And it's not only politics that is the driving force. Besides, the politicians also need some economic um, movers okay. to move their own policies. If they sit in the House of Assembly and they generate policies and the document is lying, who is going to drive it? So what I'm trying to say is, is not that um, I'm not saying we've not tried, but we could be better. That's the honest truth. As long as 
or not all our, some of our girls, if we don't have 99% of our girls in school, then we're not the drive towards gender empowerment. Should, should the Ministry of Women Affairs be called the Ministry of Gender Balancing? So that they will be looking at the grassroots, at the schools, to see what is happening in the schools, the right curriculum goes out. You think maybe the, the, right the nomenclature changes is going to change Why anything? Maybe it uh, highlights the importance of what we're trying to achieve. No, probably what they need to do is to have agencies that focus on that. We can, because of that, now you know, change the face of the Ministry of Women Affairs. There are other things that pertain to um, women affairs, and we need to run our vision in our own country in line with other, you know, the best practices in other parts of the world. But we can act actually have agencies that government can set up agencies that can actually run the vision for gender empowerment. The honest truth is we will not develop anywhere in Nigeria if we don't do something about gender empowerment. Let's how how about, many children should an average working woman have? Ha! Huh. <laughs> in, in order to be normal. Uh, when you're looking at number of children, <laughs> then? what's the survival rates in the society? What's the survival rates? Take, for example, in China, they live as long as 100 years. It's the longevity that matters. In Nigeria, it's a taboo for somebody to have one child. The next thing that will come to your mind is if this child has just develops diarrhea or malaria, anything can happen, the child can die. So that is why it's difficult in our own part of the world to restrict the number of children. But the honest truth yeah, but is this that... this is now a high-paying, high-tech madam in the office. I pay and I take, madam, yes. is a Nigerian yes. that has a cultural roots yes. and has a cultural obligations. Maybe four. Maybe four. Maybe four. On that note, <laughs> ma'am, I want to thank you so very much for being on that show. Thank you very much, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Great job.